Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today is Monday, which means it's time for an episode of Loadout, the series where you guys, the viewers, get to pick a gun and customization for me to use. The way you do this is you leave a comment down below letting me know what kind of weapon and accessories you'd like me to run with, and I will pick one of the top rated comments for the next episode. Today's top comment comes from I Love Coca Cola. This is the Assassin Loadout using the Recon class. We're going to have an A91 carbine as the primary Cobra Red Dot Sight suppressor and a stubby grip. As a sidearm, we're going to have the MP443 Mini RDS laser sight and suppressor. Gadget 1 Motion Balls, Gadget 2 C4 or Spawn Beacon. Grenade will be the M18 Smoke Grenade, Knife Weaver, Field Upgrade, Spec Ops. Throw the Motion Balls when you are entering a building and use the Smoke Grenade when you need to hide from a sniper or something else. Use the C4 to take out vehicles, set traps and break through walls. Try to knife as many people as you can and try to stay silent. And I gotta say, I'm pretty excited to try out the A91 since the last patch. It got a universal upgrade to its recoil, to its muzzle velocity when using a suppressor. It basically improved in every single way possible. Of course, it did get the standard damage reduction that all 25 max damage weapons got, so it only does 24 max now, but the gun is so much better than it was before, so try it out if you haven't already. Now, the whole basis for this build is the Stealth Assassin. We've got suppressors on both the primary and secondary. The smoke is going to help me move around the map a little bit more concealed, and this is great for TDM style gameplays where you really do need to stay off that minimap. In this clip you'll see just how handy that becomes. I noticed an enemy up here on this corner on the minimap. I can even see his muzzle flash around the corner. Take him out quickly and I hear some defibrillators charging up. The enemy doesn't know I'm so close and I'm able to get a double C4 kill there and take out his teammate with my primary after that. Now normally the A91 has a muzzle velocity of 470 meters per second. Not too respectable overall, especially in the carbine and assault rifle category. It's just not going to be that great for hitting moving targets or too long range targets. So putting a suppressor on here really doesn't hurt you too much. It drops your muzzle velocity down to 320, which is definitely a lot slower. But in comparison to other weapons out there, it's really not that big of a factor. So the A91 makes a great candidate for a suppressed weapon because it is a bullpup carbine. It has excellent hip fire and that's going to allow you to get some good hip fire accuracy even with the suppressor in close quarters. And if you do find yourself hip firing a lot then you can try out the laser sight to try and get a little bit better hip fire accuracy though I found no problems using the hip fire accuracy without a laser at all. In fact you might even want to keep that slot open because when the next last stand expansion comes out there we're going to get the option to equip the auto targeter on there which is going to be probably a go to attachment for a lot of people. It's not so much that the attachment is so great, it's that a lot of people, myself included, often don't use that gun slot, and this will be a nice little auto-targeter to basically just enhance our gameplay without any real negative side effects. I was playing around with it a lot in Last Stand, and although it didn't come in handy all that much, every now and then it would spot out a guy that I wouldn't have seen otherwise. And in this clip, I was able to remain stealth from the enemy team for so long, being above them with a suppressed weapon, it took them quite a while to figure out where they were getting killed from. The suppressor honestly is just such an incredibly good attachment in any sort of TDM game mode. Maybe not so much in Rush, maybe not so much in Conquest, especially when you're playing with a lot of squad mates nearby that don't have suppressors, but if you are kind of going solo, a little bit more run and gun in a TDM style or domination style game mode, it is unbelievable unbelievably useful. Now watching your minimap is not only important for just spotting out the general enemies that are around you trying to anticipate who's going to sneak up on you, but it's also important for figuring out how spawns are going to switch up in TDM or domination game mode. Sometimes you'll be attacking one side pretty hard, you'll have them locked down, you think you pretty much finished them off, and you'll notice on the minimap that the entire team has spawned behind you. A lot of times players don't catch on to this quick enough and they can get some really good flanks on. So often watch that, especially when you're on a really good tear on one side of the map, you might want to start heading back towards the other side before you think you've even finished up killing all the guys on one side because chances are the spawns have switched and if you want to get in a good position you're going to have to start immediately. And I'm about to run up and get a triple hip fire kill with the A91. Granted my targets are damaged and hurt and they're softened up but it's pretty funny because the third guy I don't even think I shot him and he somehow died and I got the kill for it. I'll take it. You know every now and then the netcode plays out in your favor. 
Now, as much as I wanted to, these teams were pretty well balanced and there's a lot of good players on both sides. It was very hard for me to get into a proper knifing situation, or whenever I ended up behind some players, I knew that there was too many of them for me to get a good knife kill in there and continue on. So it almost always seemed more beneficial to just try and kill them with my suppressed A91 rather than go for the knife kills. I find the knife kill a much more viable option when I don't have a suppressed primary and I want to stay off the minimap, but since I had a suppressed primary and a suppressed secondary, there's a lot of options that I wanted to go to before trying to get that knife kill. Just because it's so buggy right now, sometimes the player's turned around and he gets a counter knife on you, even though it looked like he had his back to you in the first place. And I just don't like the unpredictability of that. I try and control my engagements in this game, I try and control my situations, and knifing just seems kind of like you're rolling the dice. Now some cool facts about the A91. At first glance it does look like it kind of fits into one of the Chinese weapons. Weapons. It's just got this sort of weird bullpup looking design to it, but it's actually a Russian weapon and it was really designed to be used with a grenade launcher mounted underneath the barrel up front. It would be very cool if there was a special kind of grenade launcher designed for the A91 in Battlefield 4. Perhaps you get some benefits for it. It would be a neat way to sort of pay tribute to the original design on the gun. It also has a forward ejection port for the rounds in this so that if you're switching from left-handed to right-handed, you don't have brass basically flying out in your face. And interestingly enough, it appears that the animators actually took this into consideration when designing the uh, shell ejections from this weapon. I don't see any brass flying out to the right side of this gun. So that's a really cool attention to detail, something that I wasn't necessarily expecting considering that the F2000 has the same sort of shell ejection in real life, yet in game you see the brass flying out to the right of the gun. So just kind of an appreciated little attention to detail with the A91. And here we are finishing up on Hainan Resort. Honestly, I like this map for TDM. I'm surprised to say so because it does have some flaws with it, but if you kind of stick to the basic strategy of getting close to the hotel, try and hold down the hotel, then you'll do all right. The game level itself is not so chaotic that you can actually control your engagements pretty well. And this lends itself really, really well to the suppressed style of combat because you can get up in the hotel, you can trick out the enemy team, they won't realize where their soldiers are dying from until it's too late, until you've cleared the rooms and sort of taken over your portion of the hotel. Usually what happens is one team controls one side of the hotel, the other team controls the other side, then you have to try and navigate through the middle part to get over there and basically wipe out your competition. Overall, I was really enjoying this stealth loadout. The A91 complements the suppressor just beautifully. The accuracy is decent, and it's perfect for close range and medium range engagements. Long range, you shouldn't really be going for those in the first place. Try and get in closer before you open fire, but if you are in that close to medium range engagement, you are going to be on par damage wise with most of the other guns in the game. You've got a nice 800 round per minute rate of fire. And be careful with your reload. It's definitely on the higher side, so make sure to keep some rounds left over in your mag for any follow-up targets. As always guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave your comments down below for next week and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.